All right, in this lecture, we're going to look at linear combinations and span of a set of vectors. Given a pair of vectors, we've already defined what their sum is. We work coordinate-wise and add up our first coordinates of each vector, our second coordinates of each vector, and so on, up to the nth coordinates of each vector. So sums pretty easy. Already seen some examples geometrically of what sums look like. So given a vector, another operation that we can perform is we can scale it up or down by some positive or negative constant c, um, positive, negative, or zero. So the way we define a scalar multiple of a vector by a constant c is coordinate-wise, multiplying each term in our vector by this constant. Uh, we've already looked at in a previous lecture how to visualize sums of vectors using the parallelogram rule. So this geometric representation tells us that the sum of two vectors can be achieved by gluing the tail of one vector to the head of another. There are other geometric ways to envision scalar multiplication, namely when we multiply by some constant inside our field, if the constant is bigger than one, it'll increase the length of our vector, but keep it pointed in the same direction. Or if our constant is between 0 and 1, it will scale down our vector somewhere along the vector's original length, all the way down to if we scale by 0, we obtain the 0 vector where all entries are 0, or scaling by a negative constant give us a gives us a vector pointing in the opposite direction. So this works for both of the vectors in this image. But let's look at how we can take scalar multiples and turn them into ways to combine vectors to get new vectors that we would want. A linear combination of vectors is a vector of the form a sum of the product of some constant and of our vector 1, some second constant in our vector 2, up to some constant in our last vector on our list. And so to examine a linear combination, let's look at you know, a sample linear combination with the two original vectors that we, we had in our diagram. So one way that we could, you know, one linear combination in our full set of all such linear combinations is we multiply by 1.5 for our v, we scale down by 0.6 for our w, and then take their sum. So the linear combination of the two vectors that we started with um, is the new vector 6.6, 4.8. The set of all such linear combinations is called the span of a set of vectors. And so a lot of our initial studies of systems of linear equations will involve calculating the span of a set of vectors. So to test whether or not a vector is in the span, one thing you know, we can picture geometrically how to get to this is we imagine taking our two vectors, um, in this case that we're looking at in R2, we take one of the vectors and scale it up until it hits, uh, scale it up or down until it hits a line that's parallel to the, the, the other vector but passes through the point we're interested in. So we can see our original vector w here is parallel to the line that runs through 6, 5. So we scaled up our vector v until it hit that parallel line passing through the point. Once we've obtained that, we can glue whatever multiple of our second vector we need to take us up to that point along the line. So this says our vector 6, 5 is in the span of the vectors 4, 2 and 1, 3 because we can write it out as some linear combination of our original two vectors. So in general for this particular set of vectors any point inside of R2 can be achieved as some linear combination of those two. If we instead started with the vector 6, 5 and the vector negative 5 fourths, negative 1, these two lines both lie on the same line passing through the origin, so there's never going to be a way for me to get any points that don't lie along that line as one of their linear combinations. So we'll talk more about this in later lessons, but the idea is that for this uh, set, we actually, it suffices for us to take one or the other. So instead of taking the set of two vectors and calculating their span, we can actually eliminate entries inside this, this set of vectors. So this symbol, of the isomorphic to R, um, because both of those vectors lie on the same line, the space that they span is a one-dimensional real space. So in general, you know, a more uniform way to look at this, how do we calculate if a vector is in the span?
So for example, we already know that the vector 6, 5 is in the span of 4, 2, and 1, 3 because we, we calculated a linear combination that gave us 6, 5. But how more generally would we go about testing whether or not some vector was in the span of some other set of vectors? And so let's look at what this translates into in terms of techniques we've seen in previous lessons. So for something to be a linear combination, we need to find some C1 and C2 so that the scalar multiple of C1 times 4, 2 and the scalar multiple of C2 times 1, 3 add up to 6, 5. What we'll do is we'll just use the definition of scalar multiplication and move those C1s and C2s into our vectors and then use the definition of sum to rewrite this as an equivalent system of linear equations. And you might notice solving these systems of linear equations is exactly equivalent to row reducing matrices as we did in a previous lesson. So we've now converted the question of asking whether or not the vector 6, 5 is in the span of 4, 2, and 1, 3 into a question of can I row reduce this matrix and find a solution? So let's go through our row reduction for this guy just as a quick reminder. So in general, our first stage of any row reduction is to take our first row. If our very first entry is non-zero, we might have to well, scale it down. If our first entry was zero, we'd swap it for a row where it is non-zero. So in this case, four is not equal to zero, so we just scale it down to get a one in this first entry. We use that row that now is a one in our first entry to cancel out every other entry inside that column from rows below row one. And so we get through row operations, row two minus two copies of row one, we're able to cancel out all of the, um, the terms in our matrix in this column below one. Uh, we now scale down our second row, but we multiply by two fifths to get a one in this entry, and clear out our one fourth by subtracting one fourth of row two from row one. So this gives us a solution to our original system where our C1 is 13 tenths and our C2 is four fifths. So this matches up exactly with the two um, the two coefficients that we calculated earlier to give us that 6, 5 was in that span, but we now have a technique in general to test whether or not a vector is in the span of another set of vectors. Next time, we're going to look more generally at how we can apply this um, you know, to test whether or not a vector is in the system without explicitly solving for the coefficients. So we'll look both at row echelon form and reduced row echelon form and talk a little more about the stages that go into Gauss-Jordan elimination to give us this reduced form of a matrix. See you next time.